start my day. Gather all my books and I'm on my way. It's the central thing. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of CCC Connect. I'm your host for this week, Pastor Chris. Let's begin again with a few ways that you can stay connected to CCC this week. Again, if you're into basketball, our men and women's teams play this week. The women play, and the men both, play on Friday and Saturday, February 5th and 6th. You can watch those games online at cccTigers.com by clicking on the camera for the scheduled game that you're looking up. Um, Both these teams have been playing really well, particularly our men's team, so check them out uh, on our website. That's Friday and Saturday, the 5th and the 6th of this week. We've just recently begun our Spring Chapel series, so don't forget to check us out on the web. You can look at uh, each of the chapels that we have on Tuesday and Friday. Uh, They're usually uploaded within 24 hours. Uh, You can check those out at centralchristian.edu slash podcast. One little note, uh, this Friday's chapel is a communion chapel, and so we'll not be recording that chapel, uh, but Tuesday's chapel will be up and uploaded and on our website uh, probably today. Uh, So again, you can also go to our YouTube channel and subscribe from there, and you'll get email alerts notifying you of when any of our uh, videos have been uploaded. Uh, Each week, again, it's our intention to reflect on chapel from earlier in the day and to give you the opportunity uh, to check it out on our website and talk about it with your friends, instructors, um, and uh, students, fellow students that you have in your classes. Um, As I mentioned, yesterday we began our spring chapel series, You've seen the logos on our vlogs each week, new, which is a new you. Pastor Justin shared yesterday from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 19, where James, the brother of Jesus and one of the twelve disciples, challenges his readers to understand the delicate balance between faith and works. And so I'd like to explain that a little bit this morning. In the Old Testament, God, through Moses, set up a system of regulations for how you were to live your life to honor God. As we read through them today, some of them seem a bit absurd, but the intent was to protect God's people from falling away from Him so they could show their devotion to God. Uh, Along with these rules or commandments, they would offer a sacrifice to God to demonstrate His place in their life. They would, for example, sacrifice the prized lamb of the flock to honor God because that lamb was the best one and to show that God was their favorite, their best. Uh, If a person messed up or sinned, they would offer sacrifice to God to show how sorry they were and set things right between them and God. They would sacrifice or offer different things depending on the sin that they had committed. It was all intended to show how sorry they were and to show that sorrowfulness to God. As you can imagine, people started to abuse the relationship with God and would cut corners. They made up new rules, some of which were to regulate people groups, rather than to show their love and devotion to God. They came up with creative ways to break the rules so that they could say that they really hadn't broken God's laws, which really they had. They had violated the spirit of the law, uh, not just the letter of the law. In the end, they only demonstrated their own selfishness and not their love for God. Jesus, however, was sent as the ultimate sacrifice, not to demonstrate the people's love for God, but to demonstrate God's love for the people. In Jesus, God showed the people how we were really supposed to love God, not because of the rules or because the rules say so, but because of how much we love God. That is the reason why we act, behave, and demonstrate our love for others and our love through God through our actions. Early Christians found this whole thing incredibly liberating. They were now free to do all kinds of things because God didn't judge whether or not they followed the rules as much as he judged their hearts. In other words, their faith in God through his son Jesus was what mattered the most. But early Christians went from one extreme to the other. Uh, They used to have a bunch of rules and uh, a bunch of stuff that they had to do for God, and now they don't have to do anything at all but have faith, or at least that's what they interpret it to mean. Both were wrong, according to James. James says, in fact, that if you have faith, that's great. But if that doesn't motivate you to love the things that matter to God, then your faith is worthless. In fact, he says that your faith is dead. What matters to God? People do. These new Christians were forgetting that faith and actions work together. One without the other is just as useless as following the rules was if your sacrifices were done only so that you could break the rules to begin with. It's an issue of the heart. 
I want to remind you each week that if you'd like to talk or pray, we would love to talk or pray with you. Here's our contact information here in just a moment. And be sure to read through James chapter 2, verse 14 through 20, and check out this week's chapel from Tuesday, February 2nd, 2016. I think it'll be a great opportunity for you to wrestle with this idea of faith versus works or faith versus deeds. Have a great week and God bless. Wake up in the morning with a smile on my face. Grab a cup of coffee to start my day Gather all my books and I'm on my way It's the central thing Making new friends and learning to love Living as family with everyone Leaning on faith in God above It's the central thing It's the central thing